At SNA, one of the most prominent displays is that of Lockheed Martin in the main foyer as you come down the escalator. And one of the most prominent uh, models on display at Lockheed Martin this year is this uh, lethality upgrade for the U.S. Navy's littoral combat ship. Here to talk about it is Joe DiPietro, the Vice President General Manager of Small Combatants and Ship Systems for Lockheed Martin. So Joe, I know you've been working for this for a long time. There is a program of record already for this. There, the uh, upgrade is probably going to happen in several phases. So what are we looking at this year? So right now, uh, the representation we have here looks at the different phases. The primary phase that we've been working on and just completed some design activities with the Navy is what we call phase one of lethality and survivability. That includes adding the Naval Strike Missile, upgraded EW capability, upgraded soft kill, and also looks at uh, commonizing the gunfire control system with the early Burke destroyers and cruisers. So for phase one, we have the Naval Strike Missile, uh, and obviously we're, we're looking at a fast capability build on that to get that on the ship soonest, but we're also working on, in phase one, the combat systems integration of that missile. So uh, taking NSM, which we're already starting to field and plan on deployments here in the near term, mm -hmm. but it'll be standalone, and as phase one completes, it'll be a fully integrated solution into the combat system. Then, also in phase one, we have uh, CWIP, so uh, our Block 2 system, we have a lightweight version that we did as part of a Mantech many years ago in support of the LCS program. Mantech is a... So manufacturing technology. So in partnership with Owen Oren, we, we looked at our CWIP Block 2 system and how could we scale that system for size and weight. Uh, we've been able to field that system. We tested on USS Freedom. It's been actually deployed on some Coast Guard ships now, and we're in production of these systems to be able to deliver them for a phase one. Uh, that also gives us a great capability paired with the early ships, LCS 5 through 15, have a RAM on there. Uh, so in pointing the RAM missile with that EW capability, since CRAM has its own EW capability, this ups the performance as part of that. Uh, also, we talked about NOLCA. So as you look at our soft kill weapon system, again with a higher fidelity EW, strong, stronger ability in the soft kill side to employ that and those on some of our other ships in the Navy. And then the other part of phase one is, is um, we're also looking at our gunfire control. So we actually use a, a program rec and gunfire control software system on our ship already, but we're looking at updates of, for the EOIR and then some of the computing to align sort of with the program or record that's fielded on other ships. Okay. And uh, no, actually, in the in in the CWIP, you've got a component here from the M860 helicopter program. Yeah. So uh, on phase one, it's the ES part of it. What we've been proposing as part of this is uh, we have a program for an advanced EW system that we do on the MH60, uh, and that comes with an active array, and we can integrate that active array with our current Slick Slick 32 CWIP. Um, and as, as part of that, we're showing the Navy that integration that we could pull in either to phase one or target it towards phase two, uh, if so deems. All right, and you've got, now, now the VLS systems, this is, seems to be new this year. This, this is what, phase two would be a proposed phase two? Yeah. So this, um, this is a effort to stick a, find a home for a long v VLS. The, you've, you're a little space constrained here because this is over the hangar. You have a, you have a nice size hangar under here. So for the, for this VLS, what are you envisioning this VLS would, would field? So so as part of this, what we've been looking at is is uh, you know what capability can we field on air? So as we look at phase two and phase three, it really becomes a discussion for us on the concept of operations and how we want to go with maintaining that single mission capability with the mission package on board, but also being able to support more air defense ops or things of that nature. So in this particular version, we have a tactical lens launcher, which lets us put quad packs of ESSM loaded into that system, or we could do other things like a VLA uh, as part of that to support the ASW mission complement that comes with the ASW mission package. So that provides us an opportunity taking that. We have developed over the years what we call single cells. So what you see here, you know, we field VLS normally in modules of eight, under an investment project that Lockheed Martin did, we were able to get all of the ablative requirements, all the gas management into a single cell operation, which allows us to be able to field different sizes, two, one, four, et cetera, for smaller ships and be able to do placement. So we, in this version, we said we'll reuse the existing footprint of the mission package, ensure with five and follow that we have the appropriate VCG, you know, vertical center of gravity and all the buoyancy requirements to support a missile being higher up like that, and we do. And that's part of the flexibility of the LCS design, that modularity, to be able to pull something that wasn't thought about and show a way that you could create that capability. Okay, and then after after the VLS, you have a you have a laser system here. This is this is the location where currently I think Hellfire 
uh, longbow missiles are being installed. Uh, so can you tell us about this laser? Yep, so, you know, as part of what we've been doing, and, you know, that we have a program of record known as Helios that is planned for the DDG-51s. Uh, but as part of that, we have scalable laser systems that we've been investing in over the years. Lockheed Martin has invested over $150 million in laser weapon systems. And as part of that, that scalable system, we're able to show that we can modularize that and then integrate that capability into an LCS. So that, that, that is a game changer as you look at ISR missions, uh, counter UAV missions, et cetera, that an LCS can partake in, especially given where it is uh, and where it can operate in a shallow depth. So we think that's a great capability that could that could come to the fleet uh, and we continue to work with the Navy in partnership to find opportunities to demonstrate that capability. So phase one, although that's been approved at this point, uh, it's not going to be rolled into ships that are already on the production line, correct? So what's the, do you know what the plan for that is? So uh, right now the program record has us, um, you know, Getting to uh, 2023 is the availability windows that start that phase one is planned into. And as the ships operate in these squadrons, MCM squadrons, SUW squadrons, ASW squadrons, we would pick a squadron that we could do through those CNO availabilities, ensure that we have all the training in place, all the supportability in place. So starting in 23, and then be able to get those ships out on deployment uh, by 2026. Okay, well, thank you very much, Joe. Really appreciate it. And that probably is a wrap from SNA in Washington, D.C. for 2020.